Be here. So we're ready for the word. I promise you, I won't hold you. I won't hold you long. We got things to do. But I really feel like God has an important word for us today. And I feel like, you know, um, that, that feeling when, you, when they're breaking news, like you just got the tea. Like, that's how I feel today. I just got the tea from God, and I got to share it with you. Amen? So let's just uh, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds for uh, our time in the Word. So, God, we give you this time. We say that our hearts and our minds are, are good ground for you to, to sow your, your Word into our hearts, God. God, do something amazing in our minds, and let us see you in a new way. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you have your Bibles, your digital Bibles, your paper Bibles, your Bibles that light up, your Bibles that glow, your Bibles that hopefully don't got your ringtone on at this time, why don't you turn it to Psalm 66? We're um, opening and we're coming from our lectionary passage today in Psalm 66, verse 8 and t- through 12. Psalm 66, 8 through 12. When you get there, say praise the Lord. Some of y'all waiting for the electronic one to come on. All right. It's all good. It's there. Psalm 66 and 8, it says, Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living. Hallelujah. Has not let our feet slip. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You have brought us into a net. You lay burdens on our back. You let people ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through water. Yet, somebody say yet. yet. You have brought us out to a spacious place. Amen. I just want to reemphasize verse 10. Verse 10 says, for you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. And today, I just want to speak from the subject of Professor God. Amen. Professor God. Can you just say that with me? Professor God. God as a professor. Um, I don't know how you feel about test taking. How do y'all feel about taking tests? Oh, I already got immediate, immediate visceral responses, right? I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here nor there on tests. I just don't like to be surprised. I went to a DMV recently to get um, my registration. You know, I just go on to pay for the registration. On my way, I'm just paying my mom. Thank you. Have a good day. I got, by the way, ma'am, you need to retake your test. I'm like, the devil, excuse me? What did you say, ma'am? I have to do what now? In order for me to get my registration completed, I guess years have gone by, and I need to retake my driver's test. Now, I wasn't prepared for this situation. That's how I felt. I was like, no, ma'am, no. But I needed my registration because you know how the police be. So I was like, man, I got to just, I got to thug it out. Here we go. You know you only get a certain amount of tries. I don't want to feel, yes, three. I'm supposed to be a veteran driver. I would be embarrassed if I walk out of here like, ma'am, sorry you didn't pass. After all these years, I literally drove here. <laughs> it was I, I, I automatically felt like test anxiety, right? Does anybody else suffer from test anxiety? That's a thing. It's a real thing. Test anxiety. It's any reaction that causes stress or anxiety, you know, for people who are taking tests. These reactions can differ from person to person, but they can be as big as panic attacks to severe anxiety with sweaty palms and nauseous and being nauseous and all that. How many of you have experienced that before? Regardless of the symptoms, it can negatively affect your testing, right? Um, needless to say, I passed in Jesus' name. I think I, I got two. I, I was, woo, I was on the edge. I need time to read and stuff. They just caught me unawares. Now, um, I know that a lot of us do not like taking tests. Is that you? Somebody, who, who could be like, I do like taking tests. That's okay, we're in a safe place. Nobody? It's okay, because you were the ones we wanted to sit by. Those who, yes, I see you, Elizabeth. 
We wanted to sit by you, just to know why everybody wanted to seat by you. You like taking tests. But um, I know we don't like taking tests, but the whole concept of testing is actually important, right? Yeah. It's really actually important. The definition, let me give you a, the, the textbook definition. Testing is the measures taking to check the quality, performance, or reliability of something especially before putting it into widespread use, right? Widespread use or practice. Um, I need, I, I appreciate this definition because I need someone to do that, that test, that quality test on roller coasters before I get on, amen? I, I appreciate whoever that person is. Uh, I need that quality check on airplanes. Go ahead and circle that thing. Make sure it's, it's operating right. Um, whoever test breaks, thank you, person, for the test breaker, the people, food safety, cosmetics, anything I'm putting on or in my body. The ele come on, sis, the elevator tester person, please make sure these, come on, inspect, you come on here. We need it. We, the, the testing is actually very important, though we don't really like it sometimes. Um, and I'm talking about like not all willy-nilly either. Some things I just don't want you just to know in theory. I, I'm gonna need you like a, like a doctor or a surgeon. I don't need you just to know things in theory, right? If you're a pharmacist, I need you to have passed your test before you hand me my medications. If you're a pilot, sir, ma'am, go ahead and don't just say, I think I know how to, I, some of these, fl I think some of these flips work. No, no. Um, I need you to pass that test. And I'm not sure who, we just talked about DMV, but I'm not sure who letting all these people get driver's license these days. But I'm gonna need them to tighten that up. I'm gonna need them to tighten that on up because the roads is, is not right at this moment. I need them to get that test together at the DMV. But um, I definitely, when it comes to testing, I need someone to have concrete evidence that you have internalized this information and that you can apply it in a, in a manner of expertise. That you have taken what has been given to you, you internalize it, and you can demonstrate it, right? Test taking, if you think about it, is the only way, it's the only way that we can um, convey what you have comprehended the things that you have comprehended is the only way to get that information out and show that you can use it in practical situations. Are y'all tracking with me? All right. So with that in mind, our passage today is quite interesting. Verse 10 describes God as a God who tests. I don't know if you ever thought about God in this manner because we love to call God Jehovah and King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Lily of the Valley, bright and morning star, water in dry places, mighty God you are. That's who we, we love all those names, but I don't, I haven't heard many songs about the God who tests. Professor God is what I, what the topic is. We haven't, we haven't really called having really worship songs as God the professor. <laughs> Come on here. Thank you. I got soul development in the house along with other various artists. Let's put that on your radar. This concept of a testing God is actually woven all through scripture. Uh, Proverbs 17 and 3. It says, the crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. So just as there is a place to refine gold and silver, God is also, I, I'm doing that with your heart. Jeremiah 17.10 says, I, the Lord, test the mind, search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. This is God. He's like, I know. I, who, I'm, I'm putting my name on this. It's me, me, yes, me. I'm the one. I, the Lord, I test and search the heart. Now, this might be a foreign concept to some because some might be wondering, like, why would God test us? I hate tests. 
the Lord know I hate tests. So this, this, uh, this facet of God really doesn't appeal to me that much. But why would God test us? Now, we know that there's a difference between testing and tempting. Amen? For the Lord does not tempt, as James 1 and 13 says, when, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anybody. So we're not saying that God tempts you. Although a lot of us thought we God did. Temptation is being enticed to and allured to sin, to get out of the will of God. But a test is to see if we will live out the things that we believe. It's a difference. God's not trying to set you up for you to, you know, well, I guess God want me to go because the opportunity said it. No. God might be testing you. um, Going back to our original definition, let's apply this spiritually. Y'all ready? Put your thinking caps on. If testing is the measures taken to check the quality, performance, or reliability of something, especially before putting it into wide use or practice, could that be what God is doing in our hearts? Does God put up measures and systems for us to implement before we go public with our faith? Could this be what God is doing in our hearts? How else will we know that you internalized the things you said you believed? How else will we know that you have internalized biblical concept? Or did you just skim the information? Y'all remember that? When you had a book, you had a book report due, you just skimmed through that thing. You just got to just, someone told you you could speed read, and you just, mm mm-hmm, 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 done. Do we do that spiritually? With the Bible, with concept of, are we just skimming through this thing, or are we reading it? Or do you really mean what you declared? Come on, this is this going to get quiet, but I've been prepared. I came with my own amen. I know y'all thinking and processing. Do you really mean what you declared when you said, you know what, I'm going to be a nicer person. I'm going to be better. And then here come that one person getting on your nerves. Happens every time, right? I'm going to drive. You know what? I'm just going to be a calm driver. I ain't going to do too much today. Come on, truck driver. Y'all leave these truck drivers alone. They out here working hard, and we do trucks shady, too. (laughs) Then here comes that person driving crazy. What about, do you believe what you sang? We just sang today. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. Ooh, we were singing that. <laughs> or, I, I surrender all. All to Jesus. Yes, Lord, I surrender it. And then God come like, yeah, I'm going to need that. <laughs> Run me that habit. <laughs> but we was just singing it. God. Or, what about, do you really mean what you prayed? God, I need more peace. I need more peace of mind. I need more, I need more love. Well, God's like, yeah, okay, I'm going to provide an opportunity to work that out. You're going to get a pop quiz. Here come a bill. <laughs> pop quiz. Right? Do we really mean what we're saying, what we're preaching, what we're singing There's only one way to find out, Professor God. See, God tests every believer to reveal the character of his or her heart and to lead them into a deeper relationship with God. See, testing, it proves the genuineness of your faith. Come on. Not that, you know, the old folks are, don't just do as I say, Wait, what they say? Don't just do as I do, do what I say. Are we just saying or are we just doing? The genuineness of your faith. But the reality is 
We tend to learn more in the valley than we do in the mountaintop. It's, a, it's, a, it's sad. I'll thank you for a few of them claps because that's hard to admit. But it's true. When you balling, you don't need no lessons on gratefulness or, or like humbleness. No, nobody can't tell you nothing when you're on top of the world, looking good, smelling good. I don't know what, what lessons you're learning. But sometimes God takes you through some tough things. Some think about the times in your life when you felt God the most. When you really knew that you knew that you knew that there's a God. When you knew that God is for you and God will provide for you. That wasn't always in the high times. That was in the, huh, back against the wall. God, I don't know what I'm going to do. God, if you don't do it, it can't be done. God, I promise you, if you just do it one more time, I ain't going to. That's when we really see who God is. Now, let's just talk about really quick. What are God's testing methods? If God is a professor, I want you to turn your attention to Psalm 66. We already read it. Verse 11 and 12. I'm not going to get a lot of amens, but it's the word of God. It says, Lord, you brought us into the net. Who did it? God. You lay burdens on our backs. Who did it? You let people ride over our heads. Anybody ever felt like that? Somebody just did you shady. Somebody just turned on you. Somebody betrayed you for what? All I did for you, you going to do me like this? Somebody took advantage of you, stole from you, talked about you. You let, you did it. You let the, you let the folk ride over my head. It says we. I love the we because it's collectively. We all going through this. It's not just you. Nobody's special. No one's going through it. We all are going through the same thing in our human experience. We. We went through the fire. Anybody been through the fire? My God. We went through waters, things you thought that was going to take you out, the drown. You wasn't going to breathe again like Tony, what Tony Braxton say, we wasn't going to breathe no more. Jesus, if you don't do it, I ain't going to breathe. <laughs> we went through the fire. We went through the water. Yet, that yet is important. Somebody say yet, yet. That yet is a praise break in that yet. That yet will have me run around this whole place. All by myself. Come on, will you run with me? It might get to that. <laughs> Yet you have brought us into a spacious place. Woo, if you just sit and think about that spacious, room to breathe, room to think, room to create, room to be yourself, a spacious place. Come on, this is often God's testing methods. We, we, this is the part we don't really agree with sometimes. Because we like, God, just let us be. We doing fine by ourselves, but God uses the first testing method that God chooses to use is trials. Somebody say trials. I know it's going to get better in a minute. I just got to give you a little bit of this information. Trials, James 1, 2, and 3. It says, consider, you got to just, woo, this, this, this here right here. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kind, how many feel like you've been going through trials? I mean, not just one. Like, it would be okay if just one thing happened, but then the other thing happened, and then on top of the other one, and then somebody called, and the other person acted crazy. Many trials, many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And then let pers or patience and let perseverance or patience finish its work so that you may be what? Mature and complete, lacking nothing. My God. See, we want the house and the car and the check, but this is what God is trying to do in us to be mature, complete. You know, the word shalom means peace, nothing lacking, nothing lacking, nothing missing. Come on, this is what God is doing in our heart. So, saints, if this is true, if this verse is true, if this verse is true, we got to reevaluate everything. It changes everything. It really does. So you trying to tell me 
that trial was, wasn't just a hard time? You mean that thing I'm going through right now is just not just solely just irritating? That thing that, that I'm going is, if that hurtful thing, are you trying to tell me that there was some value in that? See, that changes everything. When you, when you look at the trial, oh, God, is, it's, a, it's a test? God is testing my faith? Because if you were in court and you were on trial, you're trying to prove something, right? Either way, either guilty or innocent. When you are going through a trial, you're trying to pr bring proof that you are either innocent or guilty. So this is what God is in your, our life. Sometimes the things that we're going through, we're on trial to see do you really believe that God is who God said God is? Do you really believe it? Do you really um, take the time to, to think about all the ways that God needs to get that out of you? So the purpose of these tests, the purpose is the maturing of our faith. I wish I could stay here all day, but we got things to do. The maturing of your faith. This is actually the goal of our faith, to mature, not for us to be perpetual baby Christians in the Lord. We got people who are 50, 60, 70, and then still need their pacifiers in the spirit, still need someone to coddle them, still need someone to tend to them, still need, need things, uh, uh, games to play, things to hold, things to chew, things to something. God is wanting to mature us in our faith because this is how you get spiritually promoted. We say so many times that we go faith to faith from glory to glory. Now, you, in order to promote, you have to pass the test. All my educators in the house say amen. If you're in kindergarten, I'm going to need little Ray Ray to demonstrate the mastery of ABCs, one, two, threes, and shapes. If you can't demonstrate the mastery of that, you might not be ready for grade school. So same thing in the spirit. I'm going to need us to be able to master a few things for us to be able to promote Spiritually, we want to go. We say, God, I want to go deeper. I want to love. I want to love you better. I want to go further in you. And all the things, but are we ready to pass the test, to promote, to do the deeper and the, and the wider things of God? It's time for us to graduate. So it's in our spirit. It's time for us to graduate. If you are still at the point where you're ready to fight. At a drop of a hat, it may be time to graduate. Anytime somebody look at you crazy, you, you ready to go? It might be time to graduate. It might be time anytime you hear the latest gossip and you just ready to huh, run with it, it might be time for us to graduate. If we are easily offended at every little thing, it might be time for us to graduate. It just got real quiet. Y'all with me? Let the church say amen. God wants to mature us. Somebody say, mature me, Lord. Mature me, Lord. So God's testing methods is the first one is trials. The second one is fire. All right? Fire. In this analogy in Psalm 66, it uses the analogy of God being a refiner. We don't really, you know, have a lot of context to that because we just go to the jewelry store and buy our jewelry. Like, we don't see actually how it's made. But um, when, it, when, a, when a refiner who's sitting over gold or silver, and we talked about this before, they turn up the heat. They, they put it all the gold and the silver in one thing, and then what comes up? It, the impurities comes up. It's called dross. So the only way to get this type of, 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 of purification process, you need some heat. You need some heat. How many feel like there's been a little heat in your life? That things have been turned up. That stuff is getting a little hot. It's getting a little uncomfortable. That you, you, can, you ready to get out. God uses heat to turn us up. I had such a wonderful pastor growing up. And I, he always used this one demonstration I just want to show you guys. He said, um, a lot of our lives, we are just like this little tea bag here. 
Beautiful little tea bags, all clean, nice, packaged, put together. You don't even know what's in here. It's just all nice and compact. You take this tea bag here, it know how to act, it know how to behave, it know how to be, it knows how to be cordial. Just a nice little tea bag, right? But he always says, what do you do when you hit hot water? What do you do when you hit hot water? Because whatever's on the inside is going to come out. So whatever's on the inside of this little tea bag, it's going to come out. What will you do when you hit hot water? Because whatever's on the inside, what you got in there? Junk. What you got? I ain't going to name all the stuff because we all got our own stuff. That this is the question, when the heat turns on in your life, when God starts putting you to the test to see, do you mean what you said, and did you, did you say what you meant? What's on the inside will slowly become, start coming out because what's on the inside when it hits hot water is what's going to show. The Bible says, out of the mouth, the heart speaks. And out of the heart flows the issues of life. What's going on inside our hearts? This is what God, you know, that the dross, the impurities in the fire, this is what God's getting to, the impurities. So we, we'll be fine. Like, good, I'm, I'm good the way I am. Look I'm, I, look, I'm not who I used to be, and I thank God I'm not where, you know, we got that testimony. <laughs> we got that testimony. We like, I'm good. I'm straight. But God is so loving and kind that God just won't leave you there. God won't leave you to where you thought, I'm just, I'm I'm all right. I'm I'm good. God's like, no, 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 no. There's more. There's more in you. There's more. I could do more inside of you. I could do more. No, no. There's more love there. There's more peace. There's more joy in there. No, 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 no. We just got to get a little of these impurities out the way. So let let me just turn up the heat a little bit. The heat is going to bring all the things to the surface that need to be dealt with. That refiner will take that dross and will just clear off, skim the top of it, and then that finished product would be pure gold. It would be pure silver. You know, what's more, what's more valuable, shady gold or pure gold? You know, that's the stuff we get from Durant Square. That ain't it. That ain't that pure gold. That's the, that's that, that's that, that didn't go through, yeah, that didn't go through that process. Yeah, huh. But this, this is why God, God's like, I don't want to leave you there. I'm not going to leave you to yourself. I'm not going to leave you in a state where you think you're all right. God's like, no, no, no. I, I see more in you. You got more potential. There's more that that the world needs from you. There's more that your community needs from you. I'm not going to leave you where you are. How many thank God for a God that won't leave you where you are? 1 Peter 4. This is my closing closing scripture. 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13. I love this so much. It says, dear friends, don't be surprised. Do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal or fiery trials that has come on you to test you as if something strange were happening to you. Ooh, that's us. Ooh, Lord, I don't know why so much is going on, Jesus. Oh, this is happening and this is what is going on. God don't love me. I don't understand. Surprise. We about to fall apart. He said, don't be surprised if something strange and that strange happened to you. Verse 13, but rejoice in so much you as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Hallelujah. That we'll be overjoyed. It's, you know, there's an end to this. God's not just doing stuff to you to mess with you. God's not just doing stuff to you to be like, nah, now, nah, now nah, she thought everything was going good. Now watch this. God's not doing that to us. It's a process to this. And it's an expected end to this. So how do you pass the test? Y'all want to know how to pass the test? How many got some tests going on right now? 
How many things you got, things you're going through right now? God, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know the answers. I don't know how to see this. Well, God's like, well, I got good, you, I got good news for you. I want you to see this as an invitation to exercise your faith. Think about the one thing you're dealing with right now. It is actually an open invitation from the Lord to say, you know what? Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you an opportunity to work on that. I'm going to give you an opportunity. Okay, and here's a, here's a helpful hint. Y'all like um, when you get like the steady notes? I got a helpful hint. When you're going, something, when you're going through something hard, every, raise your hand if you're going through something hard. When you're going through something hard, and wonder where God is. Remember that the teacher is always quiet during the test. We be like, why God, why? We ain't God win. When we, what's this answer? What, what do I put on number nine? No. Sometimes every loving parent gives their, their child room to struggle, to figure it out, to use the tools I gave you. My mom used to, oh, she'll be like, how do you spell that word? Go get the dictionary and look it up. I hate it. Like, you know it. Just tell me. But she wanted to give me the tools to do it yourself. You know, God's not going to do everything for us, right? Y'all know that? God gave us full capabilities, and only a loving parent would be like, no, I need you to develop these capabilities for yourself. God might be quiet. You might think that God has abandoned you in this hard moment. But God is actually testing your faith to see, will you use what you already know? And we have the promise that he's always with us. So you're not in it by yourself. Another thing, how to pass the test. Know the material. Psalms 119.11, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Some of us ain't never read the syllabus. We ain't never read it. We never, never took time to look at the instruction manuals. Some of y'all like to put stuff together without the instructions. And then we wonder, translate to our lives, we wonder why our lives has got missing screws and stuff is falling apart. We got a little, a little bit. You got a little lean to it. We ain't read the instruction manual. God has given us a manual, the scriptures, to give us what we need. But I got good news for you. I got good news for you. Y'all ready for some good news? So good news for you. It's an open book test. Oh. Hallelujah. It's an open book test. Do you remember how your heart would feel with joy when your teacher told you that? And you was like, Lord, we got a test on, fi on Friday. You're like, it's open book. Lord, I... That changed everything. Oh, snap. Say less. Cool. I mean, bookmark these pages real quick. Man, that was reason to shout. Remember that confidence that you had when the teacher declared this. This is the same confidence we can have in the spirit. When we're going through things, you're not going all along. It's an open book test. All the answers you need is already in the word. Everything you need to guide you, to give you peace, to give you joy, to give you guidance, to give you wisdom is already in there. Even better, we have the answer key. Y'all remember as one, one kid always had the answer key? That was like one kid. Don't raise your hand if you was that one kid. Somebody always got a, got a hold of the answer key. We got the answer key. Jesus has already gave us everything we need for life and godliness. Everything we need. So God doesn't want us to have spiritual test anxiety. We can have confidence in a time of testing. Have you ever, ever felt like that when you, when you was ready for a test? Anybody ever been ready for a test? You ever remember having that feeling like, oh, what? That, I'm ready. Bring it. When are we starting? Bet. Pencil. Go. Like, you ever had that feeling like, I know this. I literally know this material. It's nothing. I'm going to pass this. This is the confidence God wants us to have when we're going through our tests and trials in life. I got this. I can do this. God's given me everything I need. So we could be like David the psalmist who says, test me, Lord. Try me. Examine my heart. That's a prayer for you. God, go ahead and test me. 
Come on, I'm, I'm ready. Do it. Search it. Try me. Search my heart. Know my thoughts. See if there's any ancient thoughts within me. Go ahead, God, do it. I'm an open book. Go ahead. Test me. I'm not hiding nothing from you. See if there's any offensive way of me and lead me in the path of everlasting righteousness. So today, I want to invite you to lean into the process of maturing your faith. Remember, our goal is to become more and more like Jesus each day. That's the goal of Christianity, to be conformed into the image of the Son. And this guy, God, I, don't, I know we said professor, but God's not that mean professor or teacher that you already thought of when you first thought of. Anybody had that mean professor, teacher, unreasonable, didn't want to do nothing, didn't want to help you? That's not God. That's not God. Even the hard things in our life have purpose. So here's a couple of reflections, and then we're going to close in prayer, and then we're going to transition into our baby dedication. Here's a reflection. How might God be answering your prayers through testing? The thing you prayed about. The thing you wanted to get better at. God, I want to be more healthy. God, I want to work on how I talk to myself, how I talk to my kids. How is God answering that prayer? Maybe through testing. Where is God providing opportunities in your life to spiritually mature? Where is God calling you out of the elementary things, out of the basic things? Where is God calling you to step it up spiritually? Like, you know what, we don't have to respond to everything. We could respond in love. We could do that different. Where is God calling you to mature? And what tools has God given you to help you pass each test successfully. Think about your tools. Think about the tools God has given you. So let's just take a time to stand as we close. Whatever y'all want to play. We're just going to have a, a, a quick time of prayer just to close out this time if everyone can stand. And we're just going to pray. If you heard this message and you're like, yeah, God, um, I've been going through. And I didn't really see it that way. But I do want to see it. I want to see it different. Lord, help me to see it different. Help me to see it differently. I thought I was just going through. But perhaps this is a time that you are testing me not to break me down but to get all the things that I said I believed to get me to live it out practically. So, Lord, this is our prayer of surrender to you. God, we surrender all the things, all the ways, all the grudges we've been holding towards you, all the, all the things that we didn't understand. God, we surrender it. If you're going through a hard time, why don't you just lift your hands and say, God, I surrender it to you. I surrender to the process. I'm not going to fight you no more. I'm not going to worry and complain. I'm going to actually use it as an opportunity to mature. God, will you help me? Will you teach me to respond? Will you, will you give me what I need? The Bible says we, we have everything we already need. It's already inside of us. We already have peace. You don't really have to pay, pray for more peace. You already got it inside of you. We already have all the love we need. We have all the joy we need because it's in Jesus. So, God, will you cause us to walk out the things that we said we believed? God, will you help us to read your word so we would know what the instructions are? Some of us need a, a prayer to trust God. God, I trust you with the process. Somebody needs to say that out loud. God, I trust you with the process. God, I trust you with the process. Even hard things are working together for my good. God, you're, you're causing it all to work out. God has this amazing formula that even the bad things still turn out good on my behalf. So, God, I give that to you. I give you the hard things. God, you know the very thing that's on my heart and on my mind. You know that person. You know that situation. God, I turn it over to you, and I declare that I trust you. Come on, somebody needs to give God a new declaration of trust. God, I trust you. Come on, say it out your lips. God, I trust you. I trust you. 
even when I can't see it, even when I don't hear it, God, I'm trusting that you are faithful and a loving God who has already has my life ordered. And then the last thing we want to pray for is strength. God, will you give me strength? God, this is hard. I don't know what to do from time to time. I don't know how to respond properly all the time. I mess up a lot. But will you give me the strength that I need? God, I need your help. Sometimes the test is, will you just come to God for help and stop trying to do it all by yourself? Sometimes that's the very test. So God, I come to you and I say, God, I need your help. I'm tired of being self-reliant, trying to be strong, trying to be independent of you. God, I need help. I need you to help me in this time of testing because it's all working for my good. You are refining me to take out all the things that are not like you, and I say yes to the process, oh God. I say yes to it. If that's your prayer, can you just lift your hands and say, God, I say yes to it. Hallelujah. So God, we thank you. We love you. If there's anyone here who does not know Jesus for yourself, You've heard about Jesus. You've come to church before. But you're like, you know what? I need that very thing she's talking about. I need that peace. I need that joy. I've been looking for it everywhere else. And today I'm realizing I can't get it nowhere but from you. So if that's you, can you just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. I've done it all wrong. But I want you to be in control of my life. So I want to start that journey with you today. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank God, amen, amen. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Thanks.